I'm here at Ava, Ireland's premier electric classic car conversion company. In a minute I'm going to be talking to Norman Crowley, the owner and founder of Ava, and also the Cool Planet Group of which it is a part. We're also going to be taking a closer look at this vehicle you see behind me. This Land Rover Defender has a particularly unique origin story. It's called the Croxford Defender, so keep watching to find out all about it. Before we get into it though, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. What we do here is the wider group does everything to do with climate change and decarbonisation. So we work with the biggest carbon emitters, the biggest energy users in the world and help them reduce their carbon output. And then I guess what we do that's very cool that people would know us for is AVA and Studio AVA. We build very, very beautiful and interesting electric cars. I've been a car nut all my life and um, I, I'm lucky enough that I was able to buy some classic cars. And the thing I felt about classic cars is they're heartbreakers. They're beautiful to look at, but so unreliable. And because of climate change then also I didn't want to be driving around in a big loud V8 and so I found myself using the cars less and less and then I guess in 2019 we started to ask the question if these were electric they would go much faster they would be way more reliable and that was the beginning of the journey really. When we were starting figuring out how to do classic cars we met Richard Morgan um, from Electric Classic Cars. And at the time it was just Richard and a friend of his in a, in a shed in Wales. So we were the first investor in Electric Classic Cars and um, we've been a very happy shareholder since the very beginning. And now ECC has become Vintage Voltage and a whole load of the other um, you know, stuff they're doing online with YouTube and that. So it's become uh, something that everybody talks about. One of the cool cars that's here is a, is a red Ferrari electric. It's a 308 from 1981. And that one started off in a funny, it was neglected in a barn. Uh, somebody had stolen the engine and gearbox out of it. And so it was really unloved. Um, and so it was one of our first projects to convert it. And what you see now is a very, very quick Ferrari. It's probably the most reliable 308 in the world. Ferrari purists come to us and they say, how could you do that to that car, right? Um, but when they drive it, they get shocked by a couple of things. Like it's very, very quick. So zero to 60 is about three seconds. Um, so much faster than the original reliability, obviously. And it's also improved the handling in it quite a bit. Finally, then, if you're nerdy about Ferraris, you would know that its weight distribution was never perfect. So one of the things you can do when you move the batteries around is you can have perfect 5248 weight distribution, which it now has. So it goes faster, handles better. What more do you want? The Arctic Defender, its story is, can we build um, an electric classic um, that has the lowest carbon footprint of any vehicle that's ever been built? Right? And so every car we build has some kind of unique angle to it that carries a story. As one of the things we do is we work with quite famous car designers and one of the most famous is Peter Brock who designed the Corvette Stingray, the Shelby Daytona. And Peter says that modern cars are like watching a bar of soap drive down the road, right? And so the challenge in Ava is can we make cars that are the opposite of that? That not only they're beautiful, they're fast, they're safe, but also that they have this, um, you know, they have this deep story that creates a deep connection. And so one of the ones that we've done is the Croxford Defender. So what is the story of that? Well, Stuart was injured in Afghanistan and he used to drive military Land Rovers quite a lot. And we were so impressed with Stuart's story. We said, why don't we work with Stuart to build the ultimate electric defender? Um, and that's where that one came from. 2012, I was on my third operational tour um, in quite quick succession. And then unfortunately I was, I was hit by a improvised explosive device in IED, um, which shattered both my feet. I got a phone call saying, um, Stu, I think you should jump on a call with uh, an electric car company, which my response was, I know nothing about electric cars. Within my military service, we used to train a lot and we'd, the British Army has always relied on the reliability of, uh, of the Defender as a, as a vehicle throughout the, uh, the decades. And um, 
out in Canada, we train in um, stripped down Land Rover Wimics, which were um, stripped down defenders, no roofs, with a weapons remote platform on the top of it. Um, and they'd be used as reconnaissance vehicles. Looking back at how the Defender was so iconic in my career in the army, um, sort of really fit, fitted with me, um, being able to sort of inspire and, and look at how my sort of journey could be sort of reflected into the car as well. And the, the, the amazing design work from the team at Ava, able to look at how my story um, sort of came together, my um, regimental history, even the colour of the, uh, the Defender that they've designed is all reflects the sort of journey that I've gone through, through both my military service and also my recovery journey. Um, and being able to sort of rechange my life and being able to use prosthetics and, and, and obviously a lot of prosthetic stuff at the moment is made from carbon fibre. So being able to reflect that in the vehicle as well has been uh, amazing to see. What we start out with is a standard 2015 Land Rover Defender. We it had an original 2.2 litre diesel engine with gearbox and central transfer case. We've kept the rest of the drive line as standard because it's very well tried and tested. Certain parts have been upgraded with torque biasing differentials front and rear. And then we start to add in the EV powertrain kit on top of that. So where the uh, transfer case used to sit, we now have a Tesla large drive unit. Now the Tesla large drive unit normally sits in the back of a Model S or a Model X, and it's geared directly to power the, the rear wheels. So because we still have differentials, we have to get that uh, unit re-geared to suit the, the Defender. And then we, we get it tweaked and tuned to give a better performance for this vehicle, so to, to make it right for this vehicle. So that all sits where the transfer case, you sit right central in the vehicle, low down, nice and low between the chassis rails. And then what we do is we put the rest of the EV equipment in the engine bay and underneath the vehicle as well. So in the engine bay, you've got a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. And in the rear, you've got a further 30 kilowatt hours battery pack. And then we have to do the other things that would normally be driven off the engine. So we've got the vacuum assistance for the brakes. We've got the hydraulics for the power steering. We've got the 12 volt charging. So we've got a DC to DC converter to do 400 to 12 volt conversion. And then we have things like the heater, the heating system. So normally you get that for, as a byproduct of an internal combustion engine, that's now driven directly from the high voltage battery system. And air conditioning, similar, we've got a pump and a, a system to give air conditioning inside the vehicle. So that kind of is where we have to put all of the electronics or the, all of the electric systems to replace what's normally done by an engine. So this car has been fitted with a 22 kilowatt AC charger. So it's got a normal type two connection. So you can plug that into any AC supply and you can take anything from a three pin plug, giving you two kilowatts to a high power AC three phase system, which will give you 22 kilowatts charging. The next versions of this vehicle will have type two CCS. So you'll be able to use your DC fast chargers up to 77 kilowatts. So turning this car on, conventional key on the left of the steering wheel. You can hear things whirring. And this version doesn't have anything like a reversing camera on it. It so. does have hydraulic power steering though, so um, the fact that it's 2.3 tons isn't too bad. You don't really have to fight it. And we're off. Not the most amazing turning circle, but that's, that's a, a Land Rover thing, a non-electric Land Rover thing. Just about fit underneath here. This is quite a tall car. So with that Tesla large drive unit in the middle of the car, this car has 120 horsepower, so it can really shift, which is pretty incredible for a car this box shaped uh, and this big and heavy. Ava's put some lovely Recaro seats. There's two in the front, two in the back. Really comfortable. This Defender is kind of in its natural habitat in the Joust Forest in Ireland. Kind of place you'd, you'd expect to drive a car like this, not around the uh, urban roads of Chelsea, which is the kind of people who do tend to buy 4x4s a lot. This car, because it has really fat tyres and, and still has the, uh, the remnants of a, uh, 
a Land Rover uh, rack in the front as well. Um, it doesn't have the kind of precise steering you might expect of a, a more deliberately sport orientated uh, electric SUV. Of course, you don't have to worry about gears in this car because there's one gear in this car and that gear is fast. One thing you do have to be a little bit careful of is on roads like this, if you go too fast and you hit a corner, you might have a little trouble actually getting around it. Because it, let's face it, this is a 2.3 ton car. You don't really expect a, um, a Land Rover to be, well some Land Rovers maybe, but not, not a big utilitarian one like this to be a, um, a driver's car. But it starts, once you get used to it, it does feel like a driver's car. I mean, not having to worry about what gear you're in really makes uh, a difference because you can concentrate on, um, on just the steering aspect. So the, the, the front suspension on this car is the same as the original car but they've stiffened the springs on the back on this one because there's a battery pack in the back. So Ava hasn't done an Auto 60 test on this car yet and I'm not about to do one on these countrified Irish roads myself but they reckon it's probably just around five seconds to get to 60 which again is kind of bonkers in a big you can pick a truck like this. This car just feels totally in its element on these kinds of roads. It's what it was meant for, really. It was meant for picking up sheep, like uh, like just in the, over the side there. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to put a sheep in the back of this because you'd ruin the upholstery. That became the car behind me in shock, I'm sure. But he wasn't expecting that. So you could probably hear the motor whining at this speed. Apparently that's something they can they can remove by adding some deadening, but for this particular car they've left it in uh, so that people can actually hear what the, the electric motor actually sounds like. I kind of like it actually. It's amazing to sort of feel the the raw power in a defender that's such a has a lot of weight behind it, but the the speed that that electric engine can put into it. And I mean, I remember driving Defenders with normal diesel engines and things, and they're quite sluggish, the, the, the handling and the, the sort of performance level that it's taking it to the next level. To have a Defender that's got my name on it is, it still feels pretty surreal. So in May um, this year, in, we're gonna be um, taking on a challenge, which is a 2000 kilometer cycling challenge uh, from Land's End to John O'Groats. Um, I'm going to be taking on a predetermined route which isn't direct, um, is going to be heading through the middle of Wales and, and taking on some of the most beautiful parts of the, the country um, on sort of minor roads, gravel and single track um, and the AV Defender is going to be supporting me throughout and throughout the challenge we're going to be raising money for, for Blesma and making sure that we can sort of give back to their to their fundraising and being able to them um, to be able to support other veterans through similar journeys that I've been through. We see two things happening on the EV conversion side. We see the sector growing up, so things being safer, um, being better, more refined on one side. And then the other thing that we're doing is doing vehicles with meaning, right? So whether that's working with Peter Brock and Ian Callum on a reimagining of their most famous cars, or whether it's some crazy fast ground up build. So still a lot of excitement, still a lot of awe in the cars, but also a little bit of grown up and a little bit of safety. So that's Ava and that's the Croxford Defender. Loads of really interesting things happening in electrification over here in Ireland. We can't wait to see what more comes out of this company. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel.